In today's episode of Getting Geeky with Gamer Levi, sit down with Michael to talk about his new game, On the Rocks, that's on Kickstarter. Then we'll see what else Kickstarter has to hold for us. But first, a message about our sponsor. This episode of Getting Geeky with Gamer Leaf is proudly being powered by Torres Games, who are bringing Serpent Master back to Kickstarter the first of next month. Serpent Master is a card driven abstract board game for one to four players where a player must keep their serpent on top to win. Plus, they're doing a giveaway with us, or a few of them in fact, over there at thegiveawaygeek.com. Enter today and back their Kickstarter on the 1st of August. <laughs> Getting Geeky with Gamer Leaf, the podcast in which one man strives to level up his geekhood and helping you do the same one battle at a time. Now, let's get geeky with Gamer Leaf. Welcome to On The Rocks Cocktail Lounge, where the city's best mixologists come to create cocktail drinks patrons crave. Did that sound familiar to you guys? It didn't to me either. So good thing we're here on Getting Geeky With Game Relief. Today we're joined by the creator mastermind of On The Rocks that's coming to Kickstarter. (laughs) Tonight, we're lucky enough to have on the creator mastermind behind this game. Is that right? Is that how you fall in line with On the Rocks, Michael? <laughs> yes, that's how we do. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us on Getting Geeky with Game Relief. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. No problem. Now, before we jump into your game, let's rewind a little bit if we could. How did you get into playing tabletop board games, Michael? Oh, man. Um, well, pretty much like everybody else. Uh, we I started at a young age. Uh, my fr- father first introduced me to chess at the age of four. And then, you know, of course, we played Monopoly, Parcheesi, all those type of games, games, game of life. Um, and then, like any other kid growing up in the 80s and 90s, um, I got into video games with Nintendo and everything else. So I pulled away from the board games for many years. Um, then when I found me and my wife got engaged later on in life, um, we, we decided that we needed to save money. Um, we want to buy a house, pay for the wedding, things of that sort. So we decided to start buying board games. So around 2011, we actually went and picked up our first game, uh, which was pandemic. Um, and then from there we fell in love with just modern day board games. Um, but we started actually building our collection, uh, pretty much when we actually bought our house and started a family, but, um, just being being a part of just playing games all the time has became has become a very important thing in our life. And did you find that buying board games was cheaper than video games? Uh, uh, it's pretty much at the same rate because I can still continue to buy board games even though um, it's I continue to buy board games even though I had a bunch of video games. There, my the price point is still pretty much the same. So. But I just enjoy the adventure and all the different type of storylines that board games have. And just the way modern board games are, um, it just draws you in. And it's it's you could say it's addicting. Yeah, most definitely. And I imagine you've played your whole collection that you've gotten. No. Oh, okay, good. I'm not in the... Yeah, I'm not, no, I don't feel unnormal. So there you go. Awesome. There's definitely a shelf of shame downstairs. There you go. I've also heard it referred to as shelf of opportunity. What is on that shelf that you want to get to the table next, do you think? Oh, Gloomhaven. Uh, we've been so busy with uh, working on a game for the past year that Gloomhaven came in months ago and it's just sitting down there and I can't wait to actually open it up and actually run through the campaign with my wife. So that's one thing we're hoping to have some free time after everything is done and we can actually start playing some games games that we have downstairs that we collected for the past year. I, I feel you, not on the creating games, but on Gloomhaven being stuck on the shelf waiting to be played. So, yeah, we'll see who gets to it first, I guess. But you talked of making a game, being busy this last year. What can you tell us about On the Rocks? Well, I mean, On the Rocks is, uh, as we said earlier, um, On the Rocks, you're a bartender, a mixologist. And what we're doing is actually creating mixed drinks. So if you 
if you ever played um, Potion Explosion, um, they it's a similar type of mechanic where you're collecting marbles to, as you, um, to you're using as your ingredients, and you'll be adding those to your player board. Um, and so it's a it's a re recipe fulfillment type game. Um, so in our game, you'll be collecting marbles, adding them to these jigger bowls. So there's a mancala fill in the in the middle um, with these little bowls that you actually drop the marbles into. And then from there, you actually select one of those uh, jigger bowls and add that, all those ingredients to your player board. And then at that point, you'll be you'll you can actually save some. And um, if there's no spaces for any of those other ingredients, you actually put them back into your the shaker bag, and then you will pass those that bag of marbles to the next player. Um, but the thing is with the game, there's you'll start seeing that there there's a lot of strategy. That there's a lot of depth to the game than you than at first thought when you actually see it at first sight. Um, and the, the game has got a lot of good feedback from everybody that played it, has played it in the past year. The game has grown so much. Originally, it was just a, a bag or uh, marble drafting game. But then when we actually added the bowls to the game and actually created that interaction between other players and where you want to make sure that you're not giving ingredients to other play, the other players at the table. And there's also special marbles, such as the black marble, which is a spill marble, where you want to make sure you strategically place that in the bowls um, where they can affect other players that, that will slow them down from being able to complete their drinks. As well as we have like tip cards. So when you complete a drink, you have these tip cards, um, which you can use to benefit yourself to um, to actually come, to gain more marbles to add to your player board. Or you could actually use those tip cards to affect other players by causing them to spill their drinks or force them to take less amount of marbles on their turn. So there's a little bit of take that to this game as well. Oh, good. Yeah, we always enjoy some good take that in our family. So per se, me and you sat down to play it. What's my turn going to look like or consist of, Michael? So your your turn, typically, you have there's like a sequence of eight steps. So everybody will have a player guide beside them just in case. Um, so what happens is on your on your turn, you roll the dice. Based on that amount, there is how many marbles you will draft out of your out of the shaker bag. Um, so let's say you roll the 10, you'll draft 10 marbles out of that bag. Then in the middle of the table, you'll have these you'll have these five uh, round jigger or five jigger bowls that you can actually place the marbles into one at a time. So you you want to see what what drinks you have to complete underneath your player board, and you want to see what bowl may benefit you the most. So you want to make sure that you're adding the ingredients into the bowl that you you want. So after placing the bowls um, placing the marbles in clockwise order, you'll you'll pick one up and add them to your player board at that point. Um, after you place everything down, you'll place the, the jigger bowl back into the circular pattern into the middle of the table. And then from there, if you completed a drink, you will flip it over place, collect those ingredients, add them back into the shaker bag, and then you will s select your tip, your tip card. Um, again, with the tip cards, they, there's three different types. There's the share card, the the pass card, and the keep card. The keep cards benefit your benefit you. The the Pass cards are considered complaints. So if you did receive one from the player previously at the very beginning of your turn, you have to complete that um, complete that complaint that you received. And then the share card is a card that benefits you as well as another player. Okay. It sounds pretty cool. Um, but unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but me and my family don't drink. So how does this go down with people who don't drink or whatnot, would you say? Well, the... Well, there's no drinking involved. Again, the, it's pretty much just matching colors. So like Potion Explosion, you're just trying to complete your drink orders. Um, they even, The theme may tailor to, for, like, it tailors to more adults or um, casual players, game players. Um, but if your family doesn't drink, it, it's still fine. It's just a little bit more of an adult-style type game. Um, and the game plays very smoothly. Um, and if... If drinking is one of the issues that you feel that, like, if this is not just because of the theme, um, I could definitely understand that if your family doesn't drink, but the game has nothing to do with you actually drinking at the table. It's just completing drink orders like any type of kitchen type game where you're trying to complete uh, food orders for people. It's the same thing as our game is that you're just trying to complete these drink orders. 
uh, for your customers. Okay, awesome. I really like the mechanic. Like, so you roll it, if I understand correctly, just make sure I got it. I roll the dice and then that's how many marbles I take out of the bag and I don't know what I'm getting. And then I put them in the bowls and then I pick a bowl I, I use after that. Is that right? Correct. You would, you, would select the, you would select one of the jigger bowls for yourself and then you would just take them out and place them at one at a time because on your player board you'll have, you'll have four recipe cards that you have to complete. So, so let me just jump back a little bit. So when you're actually starting the game off, you have to choose between three to four recipes. Um, <clears throat> so there's different, there's a, there's a highball, there's martinis, um, there's an old fashioned, and then there's a hurricane glass. So each type of the cards have, so you'll select four of them, but each card has their ingredients on it that you, you have to complete to actually finish up. So let's say one, one drink has, six ingredients on it, maybe let's say two blues, a red, a yellow, a white, and a green. So you want to make sure that you get those color marbles to add to your player board to complete that drink. So if that drink's completed, then you will flip it over, showing everybody that that drink is completed, and then you still have two or three remaining drinks to finish before you can move on to to the next round. So you're considered like one full round of drinks. I I really like what I'm seeing here, just the mechanic and the yeah, it looks like a pretty fun game from what I can tell. And then you got the, you said the spill marble, that's the black one, so I can make other, other people spill their stuff they have? Correct. And then we have, have another one that's a gold marble, which benefits you, um, which allows you to actually go into the bag and choose two ingredients of your choice to add to your player board. Then we also have a wild marble, which you could use as any color on your player board. So, again, the, the whole the whole game is trying to complete these drinks that you selected. So you during your first round, you have your three or four drinks that you have to complete. Once they're done, you will collect them, put them off to the side of your player board. And then you actually, um, we have these little lemon wedges that we use as round markers and you will place it onto your player board, showing everybody else that you're moving on to your next round of drinks uh, to complete as a bartender or a mixologist. And then you would choose two, uh, three to four more drinks in the next round. So the way the game is, is that you want to make sure you have the most money at the end of the game. So after f- three full rounds of uh, com- drink completions, um, you'll add up your final score. So let's say, let's just say you and I were playing and you were the first one to go out and you place your third round of drinks. You would say last call. So what happened is with the last call that triggers the end game. And then that will allow me one opportunity to try to complete my final drink. And then <clears throat> at that point, if I'm unable to complete my final drinks, um, I will take a negative value of two for each drink not completed from my final score. Then at that time, we would just tally our, our, our scores from our drinks that we completed plus the tips that we, we've received. So, um, and then at that point, whoever has the highest score would be the winner of the game. Um, so with the tip cards, um, they also, just to give you a heads up on that, they also have a value and they also have a special ability. So, so which I said earlier, which had the pass, the, the keep, and the, the share, um, if you do decide to use that ability, then you have to discard that card so you can actually use that for final scoring. Um, but they also have a value. So if you, do not, if you do not use it, then you would just use the, the value of that card plus your drinks and add everything together to get the final scoring of your game for your game. Okay, cool. I really like what I'm hearing. It sounds like a pretty fun game. During playtesting, was there anything you had to scrap because it just wouldn't work for the game, Michael? Um, yeah, there's, well, playtesting, we've playtested the game over 100 times. So, yeah, a lot of things are scrapped that we tried new things to see what worked, what didn't work. Um, during the first one, when we actually did a spill drink, we actually had a person actually spill your entire drink. So let's say, let's just say your drink uh, required uh, eight marbles to finish. And you're at seven, you needed one more, and you picked up the spill. That would have wiped off your whole board. So we saw that was okay. We had that didn't work. It just it it, it put a person back way too far um, in the scoring. So we want to make sure that we continue to tighten the game up over the years, over the year. Um, and so that was one thing. Another thing was it was originally just a bag drafting game where you would just grab drafting ingredients and adding them to your player board. But the problem is with that is that there was no interaction at the table. Um, so we that's where we or we found we had to find a way to actually make this game work a little bit better so after playing azul 
Um, if you've played as though you had those little tile factories in the middle and you you could actually, you know, select what marbles you, or which tiles you want to add to your player board um, and as well. So that gave me an idea, okay, we need this type of circular pattern for a game to try to make this work. And then after also playing um, Century Spice Pro, they had those little cups in there. So I was like, okay, those cups will work. So when we first started playtesting this game, I was actually using the Azul cups for our, for our game. And that's how we started getting that dy dynamic of this this Man Mancala feel. Um, and I didn't even know about Mancala until I actually was playtesting, and everybody told me about it. And I ended up buying the game. It's an amazing game. So I can see why it's been around for so long. Um, but that those changes over the years has made the game to where it's at right now, where people are actually really liking this game and the reason why we're trying to go to Kickstarter with it at this point. Yeah, speaking of going to Kickstarter, how did you know when it was ready, Michael? When there was no more comments. I mean, there was always small little changes, but there was never a large change needed. I, we, I can't, we haven't had a had a huge change to the game probably for like three or four months now. Um, just smaller little things that we have were who the first player is. Originally, we had it rolling the dice and everybody will roll the dice. So we scrapped that and it's pretty much the last person to turn 21 uh, is, become, is the first player of the game. Or to whoever's closest to twenty one at that point. So that's those. So those type of little changes has has were added into the game recently. But yeah, once I stopped getting comments back from people and they just said that this game is perfect, it's smooth, it's not clunky anymore. It, it's it was time to move on and try to get this whole Kickstarter um, moving along. And we've been trying to promote this game pretty much for about six, seven months already, just showing people where we're at with the game. And they were along with us trying to develop it. So like on Facebook, we have our own group for Pentry Games, and then we also have a community for On The Rocks. So, and we also joined a part of a print and play group um, where we actually created all the files for people to actually print this game up throughout the world and we actually had somebody in norway actually make it we had a person in germany make it we had people in california and a few other people throughout the world actually make the game and every single one of them has said it's starting to become the family favorite for them well there you go now they can get it with marbles because that's kind of be kind of hard to print the marbles but i guess if you had a 3d printer you might be able to do it well we we for the print, print and play we actually created a sheet where you can actually cut out little squares um for the different colors so if you put those in all you need was a bag so you would just pull out these little paper squares or we also recommended if you do have a, a game that has like small blocks in it um any cubes you could you could use the cubes in place of the marbles okay and awesome and it looks like you're also offering the print and play during the kickstarter so if anybody missed out on that, you'll get the files that way as well. Correct. Well, the files that we sent out originally, they, the art quality was less on it, so we removed the backgrounds, removed a few things from it. So, But the gameplay is the same. So now anybody who backs us and tries to get the print and play, you will get the full high-quality files that we'll be sending to the printers. So they'll get the exact same thing that everybody else will. Awesome. Or plus, you'll um, and you, it looks like if you get the regular game, you can also get the print and play to play in the meantime while you're waiting for the actual game to be delivered. Awesome. So yeah, and you're on Kickstarter from when to when, Michael? Uh, well, we're going to do a 30 day campaign, so we'll be on from July 23rd until so 30 days will be the 21st of August. Okay, the 21st of August. So, somebody's listening. They like what they've heard. What makes your game pop as one of my audience should go check out the Kickstarter and back it if they like what they see, Michael? Well, well On the Rocks is meant to be a gateway game. Um, we designed it to be that type of game where if you have friends who aren't into heavy games that are, you know, an hour, two hours long, um, this is an easy game to get them into. It's easy to teach. Um, heavy gamers and like newer gamers have loved this game for the for the gamer who plays every day like myself it, there's enough depth to the game there's enough strategy to the game that you really will enjoy it, and it's very simple um for the newer gamer it, it, it's harder to get some people that who may not like the theme but there are many people who do like this this type of theme since they feel it's a little bit it's more of an adult style theme for a game um but just for the casual player they they will end up loving the game as well um again it's easy to teach and it's 
anybody can actually pick it up. Well, even with the theme, it seems like it'd be even minus the theme, the gameplay, just lo- looking at the Kickstarter and listening to you talk about it, it sounds like it'd be a pretty fun game. Well, I I mean, I've played the game for over 100 times already and even more, and I still could sit down and play it with no problems. Like, uh, I, I've, I've heard of people who got tired of their games and they just want to move on to the next one, but I still really enjoy this game. Um, yeah, we have ideas for future games, but this game I can sit down and play anytime with anyone, anywhere. Yeah, that's good to make a game that you're not going to be bored of. So good good on you, Michael. So yeah, and we'll make sure we leave all the links in the show notes so they can go ahead and click on over and back the Kickstarter so they can be able to enjoy it come, what, it looks like April or May, if I looked at it right. Yes, we're looking to, we're looking to deliver by April. Awesome. So yeah, and they can play the print and play in the meantime while they're waiting for that. So that sounds exciting. So and now we don't want to keep you all night, Michael. So mine is coming there to your hometown to stalk you. How can people go about keeping up with you and everything you're doing over that Pantry Games? Well, you can always find us on Facebook at Pantry Games. Um, just look for us for our group. Um, also on the On the Rocks uh, community. Um, we also have our website at PantryGames.com. Um, and if you just want to reach out to me personally, uh, you can find me at Michael Petrie at Facebook and just message me directly. Um, that's fine. I'll gladly sit down and talk to you. I mean, the community has done the same for me over the year. And if you have any questions about anything about game design or just, just to talk, please just message me. Okay. And if you give me those links, I'll make sure I go ahead and put them in the show notes. Now, speaking of keeping up with you and Pantry Games, is there any secrets you can share with us about what might be coming up later on? Per se, somebody's listening later on down the road after On the Rocks is uh, off Kickstarter and everything. Yeah, I mean, if um, if the On the Rocks does well, we definitely would like to do a travel version of the game. Um, so it would be easier to take along with you to hotels or just any small gatherings at the picnics or beach. Um we also are working on smaller, uh, well, not smaller games. We're actually going to work on some games that are a little bit heavier for um, worker placement. We also have an idea for uh, city building. Um, as my background is in architecture, so it's something that's I'm going to take very personal. It's it's definitely going to be a labor of love for that one. And my wife is a graphic designer, so this whole game itself has been designed and designed artwork wise uh, by my wife and. Um, and it was the whole game was developed by both of us and the community as well. Um, but we're we're just looking to continue working hard and trying to bring quality games to the market. And hopefully, people see that once they actually play on the rocks and they see the love that we put into it, that they'll see that this is the type of work we'll be putting into every game that we bring uh, bring out in the future. Awesome, yeah. And first off, we got to get on the rocks funded on Kickstarter. So make sure you head on over, and if you like what you've heard or like what you see on the page, make sure you're back. I know I like what I just talking about it and scrolling through the page. I really like the mechanics that the game uses. The art's beautiful. It looks like a pretty fun game. So if you want to see on the rocks become a reality and pick up yourself a copy you can go ahead and pledge for it on kickstarter today through what you said the uh what what of august the 21st of august i believe uh yeah so from july 23rd so starting tomorrow so august 20 uh august 21st Okay, yeah, so don't dilly-dally. Make sure you're back on the rocks today. And like I said, we don't want to keep you all night, but we really appreciate you coming on Getting Geeky with Game Relief with us to talk all about it, Michael. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. Well, that was great sitting down with Michael. If I end up getting on the rocks, it'll be my Splendor Killer, and I really like Splendor. So if you feel the same way, whether you like the theme, or the gameplay, make sure you jump on over and check out On The Rocks on Kickstarter and back it so we can make this project a reality today. Now let's go with Batterina Leaf. Where are we headed, Batterina? Kickstarter Corner! In the near future, cloning dinosaurs is cheap, easy, and commonplace as public demand for even state-of-the-art dinosaur zoos waned Underground fight clubs quickly became popular and began producing huge dividends. Trainers began making highly illegal genetic modifications to their dinosaurs' stock. Numerous high-profile accidents calls for international cooperation in regulating the new industry. With millions of dollars involved, several countries began to legalize prehistoric pit fighting. Specialized training schools appeared and soon dinosaur fighting was legal worldwide. 
The Ultimate Dinosaur Fighting League was formed and in just a few years became the world's largest professional sports organization. The most successful dinosaurs and their trainers are some of the world's richest, most famous or infamous celebrities in the world. Will you be among them? Did that sound familiar to you? Well, good thing I'm here then. This is a story of Ultimate Dinosaur Fighting. It's a miniature board game for 2 to 6 players with play time of 30 to 45 minutes, no downtime, and no player elimination. If you dare try Ultimate Dinosaur Fighting, you'll step into a world where you control these ancient beasts where every stamp of the foot, twitch of the tail, or flap of the wings could be their last. The game is easy to learn, fast paced, quick to set up, has a high replay value, and is just great fun. You can play one-off scrimmage battles, a series of battles in a tournament setting, or use their campaign rules to run a stable of dinosaurs through an entire league season. You can add in mutations, tech upgrades, and training to ready your prized prehistoric gladiator to take on any beast in the pit. Sound fun? I thought so. So make sure you back their Kickstarter campaign for Ultimate Dinosaur Fighting before Thursday the 15th of August. Tell them Game Relief sent you. You've got dice. You've got plenty of solid color dice. I knew that. But what you don't have enough of is multicolor dice. How could you? That's what I thought. Well, fret no longer as Bryce's dice are now on Kickstarter with Anthology of Dice, The Beginning, which is a line of polyhedral dice sets with tri-color and dual-color effects for Bryce's dice. Y'all made tie-dyed shirts as kids? Well, now Bryce's dice are going to make you the equivalent to bring to game night. If you like the sound of that, make sure you head on over to check out their campaign via the link in our show notes. If they get enough backers through this link, we might even do a giveaway with them over at thegiveawaygeek.com. Once you've backed it, make sure you comment on their Kickstarter page, letting them know that Gamer Leaf sent you. Begin your journey as one of the five basic classes and battle your way through a branching campaign where you choose your own path in an attempt to overthrow the evil queen, Domine. With each encounter, you will level up and unlock over 15 elite classes, adding new actions, equipment, and abilities. Will your team find the right combination of classes and powers in time to stop Queen Domine? Let the adventure begin. Sound familiar to you? Well, good thing I'm here. This is Adventure Tactics Domine's Tower. It's an encounter-based, campaign-driven, cooperative deck builder. You know, Gamer Leaf loves deck builders. That launched to Kickstarter on the 29th of July, as well as blew past their almost $30,000 funding goal on the same day. This isn't your everyday board game that looks like an RPG, as you don't have to stay stuck in the same class over and over again, but you still get the benefits of the previous class. But I'll let the game's designer tell you more about that. Make sure you catch my sit down with Nick the designer. Sure to hit your favorite podcasting app on Thursday the 1st of August. So make sure you subscribe to Getting Geeky with Game Relief where you catch your favorite podcasts. And as this is after the 1st of August, make sure you come back so you don't miss out on the adventure. Back Adventure Tactics today. In a yet unexplored area of the galaxy Sigma Itaris, a giant meteor was drifting towards the planet. A devastating blow was shaking the galaxy as the meteor hit a planet. This incident could not remain concealed from the inhabitants of the galaxy. After a long time that was marked by quarrels and battles, the different cultures of the Ishari system united. Their leaders formed the Planetary Alliance and named it the Federation. Under this new guidance, any resources of all parties were used to prepare an expedition to the planetary fragments that were newly formed by the impact of the meteor. 
The core, an ancient machine of an unknown tribe, identified the outstanding potential of the material that was found on one of the planetary fragments. It dispatched drones to exploit the resource, and as a result a confrontation with the Federation could not be avoided. Merely equipped for an expedition, they were inferior for this foe they did not know. But the Federation struck back, causing many of the ancient ships to crash on an unknown planet nearby. An insectoid species discovered the crash sites of the coarse transporters and the material that was emitted by them. Driven by curiosity, several of the Skyrex fed on the material and mutated in an uncontrolled way, thereby skipping many thousand years of their evolution. The mutated Skyrex developed an addiction, which is why they swarmed into the universe in the hope of finding new material that could satisfy their demand. The battles and the exploitation of the planetary fragments left their marks. An earthquake was ripping through the fragment and the material developed its own will. Stone guards arose to protect the resource and, as a result, a severe war on the material and the supremacy over the fragments broke out. Suddenly a portal appeared. Creatures of all kinds streamed out of it followed by an enormous godlike creature. This wasn't about winning or losing a battle anymore. Rather, life itself was at stake, and the survival of every species at that. Did that sound familiar to you? It didn't to me either, but this is the story of Orbita Victoris, the tactical card game which seems to be the best of all worlds. Being a competitive tactical sci-fi fantasy card game, there's five different factions to choose from. Still got questions? Well, make sure to either tune in to my sit down with the creator of Orbita Victoris, or if it's already out, go back and listen to it. Let's help make Orbita Victoris a reality by backing out on Kickstarter before Wednesday, the 4th of September. If you liked any of the games we talked about in today's episode, make sure you check out their Kickstarter campaigns to show them and us a little love. Backing them goes a long way. Plus, make sure to stay up to date on all the giveaways we're doing over at thegiveawaygeek.com. There will be at least two to three new giveaways going live over there next week. It's our least favorite time as well as yours. So until next episode, make sure you go ahead and get geeky, stay geeky, and bring others in the geek fold by sharing our episodes with others, as well as keeping up with the giveaways we're doing over at thegiveawaygeek.com. Gamer Leaf out. <laughs> Gamer Leaf levels up. Tune in next week to see if Gamer Leaf's luck holds up. <laughs> <laughs>